So the topics covered last week and today are related rate problems. And if there's some questions, I'm happy to do some. Otherwise, I'll just take a few myself to do. Any questions about any of these? No, well, let me just go through some of the homework. So this is section 3.7, start with number one. So we have y is the square root of x, and it's given that the x dt is three, and we wanna find dy dt when x equals four. So <clears throat> dy dt is the derivative with respect to t of the square root of x or x to the one half, which by the chain rule is the derivative of x to the one half with respect to x dx dt. This is one half x to the minus a half dx dt. The x dt we're told is three. So this is three halves x four to the minus a half. Square root of four is two. So this is three over two times two or three fourths. Part B is we're given dy dt is equal to two, and we wanna find dx dt when x equals 25. <clears throat> but we still have the same relationship that dy dt is the derivative with respect to t of x to the one half, which is one half x to the minus one half dx dt or one over two times the square root of x dx dt equals dy dt. And we wanna find dx dt, dx dt is two times the square root of x dy dt. And we're told x is 25, two times the square root of 25 and dy dt is two. So two times five times two is 20. Any questions about that? Let's see, the next problem in the homework, number five, we're given that y equals two x squared plus one, and that dx dt is two. If we differentiate this with respect to t, dy dt is the derivative with respect to t, 2x squared plus one. That's the derivative with respect to x of 2x squared plus one, dx dt. 
the derivative of 2x squared plus 1 is 4x, and dx dt is 2. So dy dt is 8x for any x. So at x equal minus 1, dy dt is 8 times minus 1 or minus 8, and so on. <clears throat> I mean, what's happening physically, y equal 2x squared plus 1, that's the parabola. And the point is moving around this parabola. And there's a velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction. And we're told that the particle's x component of velocity is two centimeters per second. So the component of velocity in the y direction is at any point x, eight times x. Any questions about this? Okay. What about number 13? We have a circle of radius r, and the circle is getting bigger because the radius is increasing. increasing. Right, and dr dt, the rate at which the radius is increasing, is four centimeters per minute. What is the rate of change of the area? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So dA dt is the derivative with respect to t of pi r squared. That's pi times two r dr dt, dr dt is four. So four times two is eight pi, eight pi r. dr dt is four times two is eight pi r. So this is the rate of change of the area. Um, when r equals eight, the area is increasing at a rate of eight times eight, 64, 64 pi square centimeters per minute. The area and the radius are related by this formula. So if you know how fast one of the two variables is changing, you know how fast the other is changing because of this relation. What about number 15? The included angle of two sides of constant equal length S of an isosceles triangle is theta. So we have an isosceles triangle, triangle. This side is S, this side is S, and the included angle is theta. So the first thing we want to show is that the area of the triangle is equal to a half S squared sine theta. Let's see, well, why is that? Well, suppose I draw the perpendicular to the base. So if the base is B, each, this bisects the base. This is B, this is half of B. And if this is the angle theta, each of these is theta over two. So if you look at, I'll just draw this as a red triangle. This is S, this is B over two, 
This is theta over two. This is a right triangle. So the sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we know that the sine of theta over two is B over two The sine is B over two over S or B over two S. And the area of the triangle, let's see, what is the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is always half the base times the height. This is the height. The height, h, so the cosine of theta over two is the height over s. So let's see, what does this say? If sine of theta over two is B over two S, that means B is two S sine of theta over two. If the cosine of this angle is H over S, this means H is equal to S times the cosine of theta over two. So let's substitute these two expressions for the base and the height into this formula. This is one half the base two sine two s sine theta over two times the height s cosine theta over two. So <clears throat> these twos cancel and I get, well actually, it's, um, Let's keep this here. This is a one half. Here I have an S and here I have an S. That's S squared over two. And then I have two sine theta over two, cosine theta over two. But by the double angle formula, just one second, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, so this is the double angle formula. Two sine theta over two, cosine theta over two is exactly sine of theta. That, that's what we wanted to prove. So this is part A. Show that the area of a triangle is given by this. If theta is increasing at a rate of a half radian per minute, find the rate of change of area. So suppose d theta dt, the rate of change is one half radian per minute. So if this is the formula for the area, <clears throat> The area and the angle theta are related by this formula. So dA dt is equal to <clears throat> so the side isn't changing, it's just the angle. S squared over two, the derivative of the sine of theta with respect to t is the derivative of the sine of theta with respect to theta times d theta dt. And d theta dt we're told is a half. So this is s squared over four, a half times a half cosine theta. And <clears throat> when theta equals pi over six, dA dt is equal to s squared over four times the cosine of pi over six 
pi over six, pi over three, one root three over two. This is root three over two. Or root three over eight s squared. And explain why the rate of change of the area is not constant, even though the angle is changing at a constant rate. Well, let's just look at a picture for a moment. Suppose the angle is very small. That's my theta. S doesn't change. As S gets bigger, sorry, as the angle gets bigger, still the same S, here the, the area is almost zero. Here the area is much bigger. But as the angle approaches pi, this area is going down to zero again. So this area, when theta is zero, the area is zero. When theta is pi, the area is zero. And in between, the area is increasing and then decreasing exactly by this formula, like the cosine. Actually, by the sign. This is zero, and this is pi. That's how the area is changing. Any questions about this? What about number 27? Uh -huh. In number 27, there's a building that's 12 meters tall. And there's a pipe, which is 12 meters long. Initially, it's lying on the ground. And there's a rope that's pulling it up. So this is still the pipe, it's 12 meters tall. And there's a rope that's pulling this pipe up until it's going to be right next to the building. So, we're told, and this S is the distance from the top of the building to the end of the pipe. And this S, so S is the length of the rope that's pulling it up. And we're told that this rope is being pulled up at a rate of minus 0 0.2 meters per second. And it's negative because this rope is getting shorter as it's being pulled up. The distance from the top, the tip of the pipe to the top of the building is decreasing. So let's give this point coordinates x, y. y is the vertical distance, the height of this tip of the pipe above the ground. That's y, this is x. So we want to find the x dt and dy dt when the pipe is halfway up, when y is equal to six. So when this pipe is six feet above the ground, again, the tip of the pipe is going from zero feet above the ground on the ground to the top of the building. So the height is going from zero to six. Y is going from zero to six. X is going, sorry, Y is going from 12 to zero. X is going from, sorry, Y is going from zero to 12. X is going from 12 down to zero. So we, we would expect dx dt to be negative and dy dt to be positive. So we need a relationship between what we know, the rate of change of S and X and Y. 
So if we look at, let's draw this. This is y. So this is 12 minus y. So if I look at this triangle, that's a right triangle. This is x, this is y, this is 12 minus y, and this is s. So we have a relationship between x, 12 minus y, and s, and a relationship, if we look at this bottom triangle, let's see, so the bottom triangle looks like this. This is 12, this is y, and this is x. So from this triangle, we know that x squared plus 12 minus y squared equals s squared. From this triangle, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 12 squared. So I can eliminate x squared because this says x squared is 12 minus y squared. So if I take this and plug it in for x squared over here, what I get is 12 minus y squared plus 12 minus y all squared equals s squared, or s squared equals 12 minus y squared. And when I square this, I get 144 minus 24y plus y squared. This is 12 plus 144 is 156. The y squareds cancel minus 24y. So 2s ds dt is minus 24 dy dt, and ds dt is minus 0 0.2. So 2 times minus 0 0.2s is minus 24 dy dt. So this is minus 0 0.4s is minus 24 dy dt. So dy dt is minus 0 0.4 over minus 24 because it's positive. So minus 0 0.4 over 24 or 24.0 times s. This is one over 60, s over 60. Uh-huh, and what is S? Well, when Y is equal to six, we wanna find the rate of change when Y is equal to six. This is a right triangle. This is six, this is 12. This is gonna be six root two. No, is that right? Sorry, um, six, um, root three over two, right? Root three over two. Because when you square this, you get three fourths, oops, sorry, six root three. This is six root three, this is six. And S is 12, yeah. So, at s equal to, at y equal to six, s equals 12, and dy dt is s over 60, 12 over 60 is one fifth. So that, should be the answer.
and the dimensions are meters per second. And what is dx dt? So we can take any relation here that we like. For example, this one. This says that 2x dx dt equals minus 2y dy dt. dy dt is a fifth. That's so this is, but if I divide by 2x, dx dt is minus y over x, dy dt is a fifth. And what are x and y at this point? y is six and x is six over root three. So this is six over six over root three. This is minus one over five square root of three. So the final answer is dy dt is one fifth and dx dt is minus one over five root three, or if you wanna multiply numerator and denominator by root three, minus root three over 15. That's what it is. Any questions about this? Okay. These are kind of fun, so I'm just going to keep going. One, two, three, four. This will be page five. And the next problem is. Thirty nine and then forty one. Okay. So problem 39, we have a certain polyatomic gas undergoing adiabatic expansion. It has a pressure P and a volume V, and they're related by the formula that P times V to the power 1.3 stays constant. That means, which is just what you can think of when you have a gas, if you increase the pressure on the gas, the volume decreases. If you have a gas in a certain volume, if you decrease the volume, the pressure goes up. If you increase the volume, the pressure goes down. Uh, find the relationship between the related rates, dp, dt, and dv, dt. So pressure and volume are both functions of temperature. So the derivative with respect to T of P, V to the 1.3, so this is the derivative of P with respect to T times V to the 1.3 plus P times the derivative with respect to T 
of v to the 1.3. So this is dp dt times v to the 1.3 plus p, the derivative of v to the 1.3 with respect to v is 1.3 v to this minus one, 0 0.3 dv dt. And this is all equal to the de a derivative of a constant, which is zero. So we get this following relationship. dp dt v to the 1.3 is minus 1.3 p v to the 0 0.3 dv dt. And if I divide by v to the 0 0.3, this just becomes v. v times dp dt is minus 1.3 p dv dt. So that is one form of the relationship. You can rewrite this in different ways, but this is exactly what it is. 1.3 PDV dt plus VDP dt would be zero. That's exactly what it is. And the very last problem in the homework, so I'll do that and then we'll stop. This is number 41. A balloon is rising at a rate of four meters per second from the ground. So here's an observer and 50 meters away is there's this balloon which is rising up above the ground. And so let's say y is the height above the ground and we're told dy dt, the, the rate at which this balloon is going up is four meters per second. And then the observer is looking and as the balloon goes up, this angle theta, the angle of elevation is increasing. So we want to find d theta dt, the rate of change of this angle of elevation when the balloon is 50 miles, 50 meters above the ground, when y is equal to 50. So this is y, this is 50, this is a tri right triangle. This is y, this is 50, this is the angle. And the tangent of theta, the tangent of that angle is y over 50. So if we differentiate with respect to t, the derivative of tangent theta with respect to theta is secant squared theta d theta dt is one over 50 dy dt and we're told dy dt is four. So this is four over 50 or two over 25. So d theta dt secant squared is one over cosine squared. So this is cosine squared theta times two over 25. And when y is equal to 50, theta, is pi over four, it's a isosceles triangle. This is two over 25 cosine squared of pi over four. Two over 25, two over 25. The cosine of pi over four is one over root two. When you square it, you get a half. The one half and the two cancel, we get two over 25. Oops, sorry, the twos cancel, as I said, one over 25 radians per second. Yeah. 
So that is all of the homework problems on related rates. Yeah. Any questions? If not, then we are done. And I remind you this week, I have office hours on Zoom every day and you have an email plus is posted on Blackboard what the times are. Okay, thank you all, bye.